He is a former Forcewood Cup champion. He is nine ML FLW wins, two Bassmaster wins, about $2.5 million in earnings, and widely considered to be one of the greatest natural anglers of our time. This week, John Cox joins me on... I'm Bob Cobb for the Bassmaster. Welcome to Mercer. Welcome one, welcome all friends, family, freeloaders, fish and freaks. As always, you are welcome here at the Awkwardly Honest Fishing Podcast that goes by my last name, which is Mercer. Happy Hump Day. It is a Wednesday, and I want to welcome in all my humpers that choose to listen to this podcast each and every week. I can't thank you enough, so I will do it once again. Thank you. I honestly mean that. Thank you for tuning in to the lunacy that happens here on this channel. The number one rated podcast on this particular channel, and I thank you for making us that. Um... Before we jump into this week's show, though, I am on edge this week, I'll be honest. I mean, um, most of you know I'm a pretty freaking rabid Kansas City Chiefs fan. And um, last week's game uh, was an emotional roller coaster. Um, I mean, it, it looked like everything going to plan. I mean, St. Patrick is picking the plays apart, and then he gets a high ankle sprain is forced to leave the field. I mean, an injury that many athletes are out four to six weeks with a high ankle sprain. Patrick Mahomes comes back in the second half. We win the game. We're going to the AFC Championship for the fifth time. And where does it happen to be? The home of the Chiefs. Arrowhead Stadium. And just let's look at that for a second. Five in a row. Every single season that Patrick Mahomes has played in the NFL he has made it to the AFC Championship. But that doesn't get much easier this week because we have to face a dragon that we have failed to slay to this day. The mighty Joe, Bur Bur Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals. I mean, Joe Burr, Joe Cool, whatever you want to call him, he is incredible and that's what i'm excited about we get to see arguably the two greatest quarterbacks in the nfl right now battle it out this weekend um i am praying to everybody i can pray to and i i, I summoned you guys to pray so patrick Mahomes' ankle heals because that's why i just want to see a healthy matchup sure i want to win but i'm trying to be a lot healthier as a sports fan because i'll be honest the Kansas City Chiefs don't even know who I am. They have no idea who I am. Um, I just chose them. I mean, when I was a little kid, I was like, I, I, I like the Chiefs. And I've stuck with them. And for a long time, it looked like the dumbest decision ever. But finally, finally, it is paying off. Um, but I'm not going to get upset, no matter what happens this weekend. Uh, no matter how many of you taunt me. Because people do. I mean, it's weird. Like, when we win, nobody congratulates me. But when we lose, boom. Oh, but that's sports. But but I'm going to remember that, like, you know, come Monday morning, whether the Chiefs win or lose, my life is not going to change. So I'm going to have a much healthier attitude at this year's playoffs. But I, but I think we're going to do it. I mean, I... I it, go Chiefs, go, okay? And um, let me know in comments who you're cheering for. Who do you think is going to make it to the Super Bowl? Who will be the Super Bowl champion? And um, for those of you that aren't into football, thanks for sticking with me. We'll quickly leave that and get into fishing. Because I just talked about my healthier mindset that I'm trying to have as a sports fan. This dude has one of the healthiest mindsets of any human beings I've ever hung out with. He really is, loves his job. And I think the fact that John Cox loves his job is what makes him so good at his job. And what he is doing right now in the sport of fishing, I honestly believe doesn't get enough credit. We are living in a time where you don't have to look far to hear somebody saying, you can't make the Elite Series without forward-facing sonar. You can't make the Elite Series without video game fishing. And he doesn't even use it. 
He is truly one of the greatest. I mean, you look at his resume. It's unbelievable. He's won millions of dollars. But above all of that, he is truly one of the greatest natural talents this sport has ever seen. And without further ado, let's travel all the way to DeBerry, Florida to hook up with John Cox. John Cox, it is always awesome um, to to hang with you, to conversate with you. But I feel like we were like this close to it being really awesome. Um, Because the original idea of this thing was when we first talked, you said, hey, uh, I said, let's do it this evening. And you're like, I chill out in the tub in the evenings. And I'm like, perfect. We'll do it in the tub. It'll be called Cox in a Tub. (laughs) But it felt kind of uncomfortable, didn't it, John? Oh, gosh. Like, it wasn't. I was not expecting that at all. Like, I was like, man, this is a great idea. That's where I'm going to be anyways. You know, you know, you know, winding down the day. Uh, And then when we like just got a few words out and looking at you and just like, man, I'm talking to Dave Mercer here. And I'm in like, you know, in the tub with my clothes on. It was like bubbling like crazy. It's just. Uh, it just was different than I, you know, envisioned it being. <laughs> well, I, I'll give you A for effort, though. I mean, we try. One, it's one thing I love about <laughs> you, dude. Um, you're game for anything. I mean, you I, I believe we once convinced <laughs> you to have Cox Rose, and you did that. So I love the guy that literally put Cox Rose in his hair. But and the I tub mean, was, but the tub was too weird. <laughs> Yeah, the tub was just the tub was just too much, you know. Everyone's Sacred, got limits. You know? <laughs> Everyone's got limits. So now you're in your where are you now? Your tackle room? Yeah, I'm in the. Uh, so all this stuff used to be in my bedroom, and then I moved uh, the year before last, and now I have I have an actual garage uh, that has my tackle in it, and uh, it's just it's an awesome place to come and like you know retie a ton of stuff and and. Uh, you know, kind of, kind of figure out uh, different techniques and lures and stuff that I'm going to use, you know, into the season. You know, that's what I do when I'm home pretty much. You know? A lot of tinkering. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's a lot. And it's, I mean, I'll, I'll, I don't want to mess the camera up yet, but I want to, I'll show you the rest of the mess uh, at the end. How, uh, you know, this side behind me looks nice and neat. This is the side we shoot towards. The other side is a pure disaster. <laughs> so, so, this is where you come to, to think where, what, what do you normally think about when you're in the tub? Oh, oh well, uh, usually I'm in the tub with my wife, you know, ah. I, like, you know, so, you know, we're there, you know, you. game planning, you know, future events <laughs> we're going to go to, you know, I, I mean, it, what normal couples talk about, you know, to totally. wind down. <laughs> totally. It's funny that you mentioned game planning about future events because dude one of the things that floats around about you and i've never actually straight up asked you this but i kind of believe it is it true that sometimes you show up at events and you don't even have a place booked to stay yet oh yeah the the place to stay is the least of my worries like honestly it's uh to just get there to make practice or or the first day of the events that's like the main goal um you know, and then normally uh, I usually either shoot Lester a call, uh, you know, 30 minutes before I'm pulling in to see if he's got room or someone that I know in the area, you know, and, uh, you know, usually I, I just don't, uh, I don't, I don't really know when I'm going to get there. So I never really plan where to stay until, you know, until I get there normally. Has that ever backfired on you? Have you ever oh, ended yeah. up like, wow. <laughs> oh yeah. Like two, three hours. What? Yeah. I've done, you know, but like this is, you know, I'm going to plan next time and I might, the very next event, maybe schedule something. Uh, but and then it just always goes right back to, you know, I feel like when I schedule something, then I end up not making it there in time. And now I'm paying for like extra nights and, uh, or you get there and you got no room to park or, you know, whatever it is. So uh, I just seem to do better just going with it, you know. Where is the worst place you ended up because of lack of planning? Like, did you ever end up? Uh, oh gosh there's been a lot of those times i i honestly honestly i i think uh probably the worst was i had to drive to one of my buddies house that was about two hours away and sleep on his couch you know that was i mean but i mean it wasn't bad i got to see him and stuff but it was just like you know i haven't seen him for i was like hey man we were up all night talking you know and then do the drive in the morning but it was fine it's whatever you know have you always been like that able to like because most people would be stressed like where am i going to stay what is my stuff going to be safe like <laughs> ha, like are you that focused on fishing that you just don't give a crap about anything else oh no no i uh 
you know, the fishing, I really love and stuff, you know, I, I might have, in my earlier years, uh, it might have been a little bit more stressful and rough or whatever you want to call it. So the the tournament stuff, it's not, it's, not, it's nothing. It's uh, it's enjoyable. I love to do it. I look forward to it, you know? Um, so yeah, I just, I, I really, I do, I truly love it. Like I want to fish all those tournaments if I didn't truly love, I love tournament fishing. I don't, yeah. I mean, I love fishing with my buddies and stuff, but I love the whole, you know, you, you calling us at takeoff, you know, coming in the weigh in, like, I, I love all that stuff, you know? And it's, uh, you know, I'm getting chills thinking about it. I like, it's been a while, you know, so it's kind of, all right, well, let's, let's feel like slow we're down. Close. Slow down. We're not there yet. <laughs> oh, sorry, talk, sorry. Talk to me about your younger days. Like, what, what were you like? What was John Cox like in grade school, in grade five, grade Man, seven? I, what was it like? Uh, well, uh, and honestly, like seventh grade, that kind of that's when I really decided I'm gonna I'm gonna fish more. I used to uh, jump my bicycle with a bunch of my friends. You know, we had the dirt jumps and all that, and. Uh, I hit my head really hard and I missed like four months of school and I was like all these medicines and, and I, uh, I fished every day. My, my mom just took fish from the bank everywhere and stuff. And, uh, and I think that that was like my turning point of fishing every day. And, and, uh, that's when I actually got my Slurpee addiction. I was drinking, my mom would smoke cigarettes and I would drink Slurpee. So we'd, you know, it's, yeah, but, it, but it was, it was, it was a really great time in my life, but, uh, that's kind of what, you know, I, I just went, I started, I got in these jumbo tournaments. Right. And, uh, that was it. It was like, I got out of school. It would beg my mom, Hey, drive me and drop me at the ramp where the next jumbo tournament was. And I'd practiced, you know, after school, you know, uh, like I only felt like every day, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so did that like hitting your head, did that create your career? Like, were you as much into fishing previous to that four month stretch or was that when uh, you were just like, yeah, I, well, I wanted I wanted to just jump my bike forever, to be honest with you. And that was like the hey, that really that was hurt, and like they, I hurt bad, and like I honestly I made straight A's till that point. Like really? I, yeah, like I had like all through elementary school, all in sixth grade, had straight A's. I hit my head in seventh grade, and like I honestly from seventh grade till I graduated, I, I like failed everything. I graduated with a one point eight. If I I don't even know if that even counts, but you know I just. But it was just, I just couldn't, uh, I'm a bad test taker, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so was the tests. I mean, you, yeah, you, know, stuff. Like, you just got all, like, wow, <laughs> could be true, could be true. Why were you such a good student before you hit your head? I, you know, I, I, I don't know. I just, uh, I think maybe I could focus better. Maybe. That's the only <laughs> thing. I don't, and maybe it was just getting older. I don't know. But now, like, so much, you know, every, like, there's just, you know, so much going on now uh that's always like popping in my head and stuff and it's like oh you gotta go here oh we're gonna go fish there oh we gotta do this here and uh i think i was just a lot more uh just kind of i don't know just there before you know <laughs> yeah yeah it um it's weird i mean it's reminding me of that movie i didn't even know the name of the movie it's a really dumb movie but a right? kid breaks his arm and, oh. and he's playing oh, yeah. baseball but then he can pitch super yeah. fast i what was that i can't even I don't know, but I know it doesn't matter, but it's yeah. your story. I mean, yeah. you used to be so locked down and good at things, and then you hit yeah. your head, and now ideas just flooded into your head. Yeah. And you're truly considered one of the greatest natural anglers on any tour. Do you believe that? I, I don't mean, believe they're gonna be ramming I, I, their heads into hills all across the country when they hear this. No, when I you know, even when, when you call us at takeoff and stuff, like I still you know, that's why when I'm going through in the morning, I got like a huge smile on my face. Like I, I'm like blown away. Like, Oh my gosh, you know, we're out, I'm out here again. You know, I've made it to another tournament. Like it just, I just hope that never gets old. You know, I hope that always, uh, you know, I hope I'm like Rick's age and, you know, I'm able to, you know, so still, still have that feeling, you know, we've well, been doing it for a while now. You'd think yeah. it would start to rub off. It would have started to rub off. Yeah, like every year I'm thinking, ah, oh, maybe next year I'm not going to be like, you know, maybe I'll be like, oh, I'm fish a little less. And, you know, it's like I'm like right now, even though I'm like doing a lot of work around the house, trying to get everything ready you know, before I start going, uh, I'm still fishing like, you know, five times a week, you know, maybe six. <laughs> when you don't fish, <laughs> did, what happens? Is it like, do you get grumpy? I, yes. And I like I can't sleep and like it's weird. So it, it is, it's, it's, uh, it's an addiction, I guess, or whatever it's, you know, 
I get, you know, I get, it's like when you don't eat, you know, you just get angry and like, yeah, yeah. I get it. I get it. Yeah. I mean, I live in a country where the lake freezes, so I feel I, your pain. I, I would, I don't know how you guys do that. I try to, I still, I haven't seen it for myself, but like, I just still, I can't imagine those lakes freezing. Like it just blows my mind. Uh, it's it's trust me and and you know the weirdest thing is when you work in like florida and stuff for a few weeks and you're just like you, again you're you i mean at least me i get used to oh, wow it's, this is the lakes are like this they're open yeah. and then you come home and you're like it's still freaking frozen it's just it's it's mind-numbingly i don't know i mean the fishing's good in the summer that's the only thing right. i can tell you that yeah. that's why we live here right um but dude you are truly honestly one of the most positive people i know like at all and and there's different positives you mean you got gerald swindle with pma and he's yeah. preaching it and <laughs> and i think that even swindle would admit to you that that part of the reason he preaches that is to keep himself positive and keep himself locked in you got polnick who's quoting books and stuff like yeah. that but dude <laughs> You are just one of those dudes that, like, no matter when I've seen you, you're always smiling. Do you have bad days? I mean, is there days oh. when you're grumpy? Uh, well, if you ask my wife, she'll say yes. <laughs> you know, I honestly, I woke up this morning a little grumpy because I couldn't get the guy. I, I was like trying to get some of the guys together, and I'm like, dude, let's go to this new lake. It's two hours away. You know, it's supposedly awesome, and no one wanted to go. You know, and I was like, so I was crabby till about. I was crabby until about noontime and then went and got some Chipotle and that was better. You know, that was good. To, good Chipotle to go. make you feel better. Yeah, for a little bit anyways. <laughs> Have you always been like that? Just um, Yeah, I mean, for the most part, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I hit some rough patches along the way, you know, and, uh, you know, so like everything, man, I'm like so grateful for the, you know, the good days. <laughs> yeah yeah no but it amazes me like because dude i've looked for them like i've really mm -hmm. looked for like you got your catalytic converter cut off and me <laughs> and paul nick talked about it on that podcast a few weeks ago and and dude i remember you rolled up that morning now there was a bunch of anglers who got their catalytic converters cut yeah. off at that event and every one of them's like coming down, kicking stones and snorting. Can you believe this happened to me? But I mean, you, you, you rolled up. Your exact words were to me, listen, it sounds like a NASCAR. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I was, I think I was the only one to still drive it. The guys, everybody else was like, I'm not driving. I'm like, I'm driving this to take off. Like this is, you know, people pay to make it sound like this. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> that was that, that was that tournament it was so crazy because uh i think it was maybe the easter weekend or whatever and like i usually stay at some of the rougher hotels or whatever and they're cheap and uh that week i was like you know what it's easter week i'm gonna i'm gonna treat myself to a holiday and express you know i'm gonna <laughs> bed i'm gonna wake up late i'm gonna go practice and uh and sure enough that sucker got cut off at one of the nicest places i've ever stayed at <laughs> What did you think? Like, did you have any? Had you when you got into it? Did you just start it up and go? What What happened? Or did oh, you, yeah. or had other guys done it already at the well, hotel? So I came out and they, everybody's like, "Oh man, they cut my converter off!" And I'm like, "Ah, they didn't get mine. I don't, you know, I don't even know what the converter thing is or whatever." <laughs> and they were like, uh, "They told me they got me," and I was like, "Nah, they didn't get me." And I started up, and sure enough, you know, and I looked under there. It was little saw blades everywhere. And the guy, the guy that did it was a psycho. They said on the thing, the, the guy parked next to me, the guy got out from under the, the car, hit his head on the mirror, and then cut the mirror off with saw. <laughs> and I was like, at least I'm not that guy. At least I got both my mirrors still. <laughs> well, dude, but you, you're, you're reduced to cutting catalytic converters off to pay the bills. Yeah. You've got a few. <laughs> things aren't going. You're not quite John Cox in life. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> um well i'm but I, I find it amazing because you know the amount of time we all spend on the road you think you know you know what i mean like i've always said like you see everybody in their best and their worst because you know what i mean like you see people when they're dealing with family stuff you see people with all sorts of stuff going on but dude i've never the two people i will say that i've never seen not smiling is you <laughs> And Takumi Ito. 
Oh, I mean, yeah. you, you both always, always positive. Do you think that that positive attitude helps you be a better angler? Oh, I, I, I mean, I, I mean, I think you have to have. I mean, I feel like I, if I, I feel like if I was negative, as many bad things that happen, uh, you know, along, you know, stuff you can't control, you know, if you weren't able to, you know, just almost just, uh, you know, I, I almost go back to like, uh, like I remember when I was a kid, I'd watch Van Dam catch him. I remember this one time he lost like an eight and a half pounder and, you know, come off the crankbait and he just reeled it up and fired it back in, never said nothing, you know, and then he catches another one. Like, and it was like, I remember that watching that, uh, exact moment like being like wow you can't you know, to even make it to this level you have to not let any of that phase you and that that's probably the hardest thing I've found uh you know fishing a lot of these tournaments is is when that when that ha whenever that thing that happens and it's even if it's like you, you got them hooked on something you never lose them on you're like oh I got them, you know and uh and you lose that fish for some weird reason uh it's really hard to to just oh, well that was an eight nine pounder I'm gonna keep on throwing and not let it bother me and I think, you know, it obviously bothers you, but I mean, it's just a, the outlook. You can freak out. Right. You know, or, I mean, what's the alternative, right? I mean, you just, it's not going to get you any closer to the goal. You know, it, it um, who was Van Dam, the guy you grew up wanting to be or grew up oh. idolizing? Like, who were, when did, what age were you when you first started? Like, when you farted, started watching? I said farted there, but farted. started probably did that too. <laughs> started watching tournaments and being like, man, I, I I would love to be able to do this. Oh gosh, you know, I I think the first pro am I fished uh, was the year after uh, Rojas won uh, the the one at Toho. You know, when he caught the you know the big yeah. string fish, and I, I think I was maybe maybe like eighteen or seventeen then, or maybe sixteen. I don't know. And um, I just remember watching that and seeing those guys. And then I like really started following it then. And I was already, I, I, I started fishing the Jumbo Club so much um, that I didn't really know all this other stuff was going on. You know, I was clueless to it. And, uh, and then I started watching, I'm like, wow, this is where, this is where it could go to, you know? And um, man, I mean, there was a lot of them. I, I just, even to this day, like, uh, you know, even like when Clinton comes up and he like asked me if I got him or something, you know, that's kind of, it's just kind of like, oh, man, he, that guy knows who, yeah, that guy knows my name. You know, it's really, uh, so when I get, if I ever get the every once in a while I get the pat on the back or hey man you slow it down or something you something like that you know I'm just always I'm blown away when you know anytime he talks to me. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, Clun is. I mean, I say it all the time. I mean, Clun is. There's nobody doing what he is doing in any other competitive sport. Like I mean, to to have competed for literally five decades. Yeah. I mean, it's. It's unheard of. I mean, and it's, it, I think it's one of those things that we'll all probably look back and be like, man, it was pretty cool that I watched the great Rick Clunt. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. It's, um, I mean, it took me and him 10 years before he gave me one of those pat on the backs, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but when he did, it meant a lot to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So what's this time of year like for you? You're a few weeks away from from starting another crazy season. Is uh, is it like what do you what monopolizes your time now? It shocks me that you were trying to convince people to go fishing this morning. I would think yeah. you'd be so busy organizing stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah. It was, so my thing is I'm a huge procrastinator. So I, uh, I'm like, Hey, I need to fish as much as I can because I don't want to even deal with this mess, you know, behind us here. And, uh, and I try to, I try to make myself be like, Oh, you need to go fish because you need to go practice, you know, but, you know, but then it's like, you know, you're out there just, you know, I don't know, I guess it's practice, but you know, but I, I don't know. I mean, it is, it's kind of stressful this year. Cause, uh, we, we did put all like all the tournaments on the count on the schedule and stuff on a calendar. And I'm laying out and I'm like, oh, gosh, you know, you got a 14 hour drive in between these two, um, you know, and this year right now I only have the one boat. So I'm kind of thinking like, oh, I really need to place a boat out, you know, out west towards Oklahoma, Texas area. Um, but I don't know, I'm not, you know, but it's not it's going, you know, I don't know. I'm just fishing a lot. I'm, I'm worthless. I, I felt I felt bad today. Today I changed some sprinklers out, worked on the other house. Some. I was like, man, I am I'm fishing way too much uh for trying to get everything ready but so sorry babe if you're watching sorry 
I'll do some more chores tomorrow, maybe. You can explain it to her in the hot tub after <laughs> yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> what uh, the way you compete to do everything you do? Like, I, I, you have no idea how many times I think about you throughout the season where I'm like, I'm exhausted because I did two back to back weigh ins. To back yeah. events where I had to talk about bass fishing. Yeah. And I'm at home and I'm like, oh my God, John Cox is in Oklahoma right now. <laughs> and I left him in, you know, wherever, New York. And it, that, do you think that that makes you like, is that something you have to do or you choose to do? Like, does it make you a better angler to be that locked into it? Like, I mean, you fish more competitive days than anybody on any tour i would say i don't think anybody can say like uh, i do more and if they do i'm sure we'll hear about it in the comments yeah <laughs> yeah i mean i don't uh i feel like i have to do that um because otherwise when i'm fun fishing i'm more like oh i'm gonna throw a frog all day because if i catch one on it you know it, it's a big one that's great you know that's what i want to do or i want to flip a, a one ounce or whatever and i feel like going to so many events um, I have to try to, uh, you know, uh, make something happen out of some of those days that are terrible, you know, and throw something I might not want to throw and, and, uh, and fish some places I don't want to fish and times, you know, so I, I feel like, uh, I'm trying to, I, it's crazy how the, you never stop learning. Like every year I'm just like, oh my gosh, if I would have knew that two, three years ago or, you yeah. know, this, that, and then, and then watching the fish change and stuff. And, um, I just feel like for me to practice hard, I have to be in the event. Otherwise, I, you know, I sleep in until 9, 10 o'clock. I get out there late. I get off the water early. You know, it's like I need, I need, a, I need the tournament scenario to keep me out there and, and uh, you know, and have a goal at the end of the day. So you believe if you had the traditional, you know, two and a half to three days of pre-fish that most tour pros get, you believe you'd, you'd sleep in more? Is that that's yeah. why you fish so many well, tournaments? Well, in between, I would not get any. I wouldn't get you know, I would practice hard those days, uh, and fish the tournament, but then I'd have two weeks off where, you know, I might barely fish or like, you know, just fish like a few hours each day or whatever, you know? And I, and I feel like, uh, and even the, I think when you get to that, especially in a four day event, I know I didn't win anything last year, but like, it seems in a four day event, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, by that third, fourth day, you're mentally, you know, usually you're just trained, you know, and to be able to, uh, you know, try to make those decisions going into, you know, I feel like it makes me stronger going, uh, you know, working it out in those tired moments, you know, you know, going okay. from being exhausted and, uh, you know, I don't know the last, the last four or five years have been amazing. <laughs> so I was just going to, you know, keep the same game plan. <laughs> so if you, if you ever left an event, that you almost won and thought, man, if I'd have spent a little more time pre-fishing or is that not even um, enter your thoughts because you're already thinking about the next yeah, event you got to compete yeah. in. Yeah, Usually I don't have time to uh, dwell on it too much. Um, but like I did, like, I think Santee, I came straight to Santee from somewhere, you know, jumped in, wasted a lot of time the first day till about 11 to find them, you know, and then found them and came back. But I mean, then I look at that one, I'm like, man, there, there was, uh, there was no way I was going to catch, um, Drew. Drew. Yeah. So, you know, it was like, you know, when it's some of those, when it's your time to win, it's your time to win. And I don't know if practice would have made a difference, you know? Uh, so, yeah. So when we see a camera on you on day one of an event, quite often we're watching you take it apart as <laughs> live, right? Yeah. Yeah. That, no, that's a lot. Of, that's what I, every time it shocks me when they're like, when I, especially if I just get there and they're like, Hey, we're putting a camera in your boat. I'm like, what? <laughs> I haven't seen this place in three years, you know, like, you know, and sometimes it's a complete train wreck, you know, you go out there. I mean, I think, I think one of the places I went, they put the camera with me and um, I think I caught like eight pounds or something that day, you know, running around and like, I was just trying to find them, you know, and then, uh, and then caught them really good the rest of the tournament. But yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, you know, yeah, it, it always shocks me when, when I get the camera on the first day or whatever. So bring me through that mentally. Like, do you have a checklist where you go, th like you get to a new body of water? What I mean, I know it's different in every body of water, but you must have certain things that you're like, this is what I'm looking for. But, you know, what is the first thing you look for to point you in the right direction? Because it's amazing to me 
how quick you figure out a body of water and not not just i mean i mean look i've looked at events you've left where we are fishing for largemouth then you had way up north fishing mlf event and you're fishing for smallmouth and you're leading that i'm like he was leading here <laughs> like it just it doesn't to me i mean i feel like i need a week to pre-fish for everything <laughs> right. because that's right I, but you you yeah. just seem to excel at the so what is the what is the take me through that process in your head yeah i think i think a lot of what it is is uh because i'm a, like a visual you know see it cast at it kind of person so i'm able to just drive until i visually see it you know so it's for me it's just like i get out there crank the motor start going and then you know when something's like ooh that's fishy or oh i've got you know that looks familiar or if it's something i've already caught them on years before you know um i kind of i kind of uh run through a lot of it uh you know almost like uh eliminating water and, and just trying to you know even if i haven't been there five years I, I remember how i uh kind of felt the lake out five years ago you know what was most productive you know if we're there at the same time you know and then if we're not if we're at a completely different time then i'm like okay these fish were in the back of this creek really good in the spring a few years ago you know i'm gonna go out more main lake and try to find them um and just run it like practice like i, I that's what i just i cover so i cover so much water uh you know that a lot of times like, i try to add it up and I, I don't know how many miles it is a day i usually cover um but it but it's a lot you know it's you know i don't know it's, it's a tough no <laughs> do, do you ever end up on the wrong lake like literally like a, I, looking for something and you're like oh, uh, it's not here yeah so i was on uh i think i was on the potomac and i was running for like ever down way down the river and i'm running and i'm like i know that little creek's right here somewhere and i'm running running and then it goes off in my head and it's like oh my gosh that was that's the tennessee river like that's not we're not even on that and i turn around and run all the way back you know <laughs> like uh that's that's probably been the worst of it but and then uh driving wise i've left one of our events started heading to south carolina and then my wife be like wait you're supposed to be in dallas like you need to you know luckily i was only like four hours in but you know turn around and go back to dallas and i was just like i was ready to, to just go to that next one you know just had the dates wrong <laughs> did you get grumpy then with that you made a four-hour detour uh, in which would be I, eight I probably, hours i probably was i probably was a little a little agitated then so but. so what what is what is john cox pissed off what when you're at, like when you were agitated with what like what'd you do just go get a slurpee what like what, <laughs> how do you recover that is what I, did. I did i pulled it in a gas station and got a slurpee and uh you know and i was just like man you know i could be out uh painting apartments or paving or working on you know doing handyman stuff you know so i just you know, I'm like, I'm driving to go fishing somewhere, even if it's place is terrible. I'm going to some new body of water I haven't seen in a while, you know, and, and going to try to figure it out. So what is it about tournament fishing that that cranks you up? Like, what, is there something like, is it just mastering something that's unmasterable? Like, what what is it for you? Like, what is the thing that like when people say, why do you fish tournaments? regardless of to make a living regardless of to avoid a a real job like, <laughs> why do you what what is it that tournaments do for you uh i mean I, to me it's the whole uh i think it's the competition you know it's takeoffs it's you know it's uh it's being like gosh i'm gonna finish dead last and making that itty bitty adjustment and just like, oh my gosh, I might be able to win this thing, you know, and, and, and just riding it out to the end. I mean, you know, you can win on, you know, in the last 10 minutes on the last day, you know, and then that's, and just having that, uh, you know, it's always hard when you don't win and, you know, you put it on the trailer the last day and then it hits you like, oh, I'm out of time, you know, it didn't, didn't make it happen, you know, but, uh, I think it's, uh, I think it's the emotional roller coaster of the whole thing that I enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> that makes you a little sadistic no it does i feel sick now that i said that <laughs> <laughs> so at a time when the world thinks you can't make it as a professional angler unless you have a degree in forward-facing sonar <laughs> um where are you at with that because i mean i still tell the fabled story about the year when hardly when people were 
meeting in parking lots to buy these things to get yeah. them, you know, because you couldn't just get them everywhere. You had one in the back of your truck for three events and didn't put it on. Like, so how has that progressed? Uh, it, I'm still at the same. I'm still, I, that is one major thing I think about constantly. Really? Uh, yeah. And I have it and I'm like, okay, am I gonna, and I, I'm not gonna lie. I've gone out fishing with some guys that are really good with it and watched them do it and everything. And I'm like, that's cool. You really caught them. Uh, but to me, you know, being such a visual, like fish in the bank person, you know, I just don't, uh, that feeling I get when I'm just fishing, you know, fit that maybe, maybe I'm going to catch something here. Maybe there's one there and that, you know, and that whole scan and not throwing, I, I don't know. I, I just don't enjoy it as much, you know, you know, I like catching them. Don't get me wrong. But, um, but then I also think, I think of me, uh, you know, seventh grade, eighth grade fishing the John boat club, you know, I'm in a, you know, a hundred dollar rowboat with a five horse and a wooden deck with, you know, fake grass carpet on it, you know, and, and, never would have ever been able to afford that stuff you know and i, I just you know i, I just i kind of i almost want to just not use it and and hopefully hang in there with these guys uh just so some of these other guys that don't won't ever have that chance to even afford that stuff will be like hey i can make it you know i can you know that guy's making it he doesn't you know he doesn't use he's not using any of it you know so i don't know Do, when you say you think about it all the time is is that thinking about it that like is there a fear in you? Cause I would almost feel if I was in your position, there would be part of me oh, that's yeah. like, am I going to end up the only dude who didn't, it's like being the only photographer that stuck with film oh, <laughs> and everybody yeah. else picked oh, no. up a digital no. camera. Oh, I know. No, I know that's, that is, uh, that is where I'm like wondering, like, are my days numbered, uh, not using it, you know, and I've seen it. That's the problem. Like I, I fished this bank, uh, somewhere and I was catching them. I caught them pretty good. I was in like 10th place or something. And then the next day, all the guys came in with forward facing and showed me what was really there. And I mean, they caught in the thirties, you know, wow. and it's like, it's like, gosh, that whole time, all them fish. And I mean, no idea, you know? And, um, so I don't know. So that part's frustrating, you know? And then those guys I fished with, they really whooped me when I fished with them with it. And, uh, I was like, wow, like, you know, you pull up to a clump of grass and like myself would visually see it, catch one or two fish it's like, ah, there's nothing left. And they're like, nope, there's eight more there. And they would catch every one of them, wow. you know, over the next hour, you know, and it's like, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely changed everything. Have you seen, you know, everybody keeps predicting that one day the banks will get a lot less pressure and, right. you know, they'll get so much better. Have you seen any of that happening yet? Or, or do you feel they're getting just as much pressure as always? Yeah. Well, I don't know if the banks are getting hit as hard as they were, uh, even though that stuff they're able to see shallow. I mean, our guys yeah. are catching cypress trees, you know, so none of it's, it's all, it's being used everywhere on every lake. Um, the only thing I've seen on the, the bankers is when those fish come in, uh, there's no rest time for them. There's no, I'm going to go sit out in the middle of the lake and rest and not be caught and then come in and you're know, like, and that's what I, that's what I've made my living. I feel like is, is covering water, catching fish that, uh, aren't the, aren't the, you know, they're not like educated. They're like new fish just pulled in, you know, they've been out deep. They decide to slide up to you know, either spawn or, or eat or whatever it is. And I would catch them. And now I'm seeing a lot of those fish, uh, you know, already been caught that were just caught the other day, you know, not able to actually catch them, you know, uh, compared to in the past where, you know, I've been able to, catch them a lot more of them <laughs> see what i think would mess with my head and it, and it does even still because you know i haven't i mean i use it but i haven't used it at, like there's people that literally i mean you if people say things are impossible to see like there's people that tell you the species how many like exactly oh, yeah. where like it's amazing what super proficient anglers can do with it but it almost would concern me. You, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I hate when everybody turn. like, I think that they, the amount of people that are against it is just, it's a sign of the times people are on social media and they hate, you know, they've got a voice now, so they dislike it. But I also think that there's something there to con be concerned about. You know what I mean? Like, cause it's changing the way, I mean, there's no, you're one of the most amazing things for me to watch. It's somebody who can, no, no, really that natural, that person who can pick things apart and you're, you know, you're 
playing a game that you can't see. You know what I mean? But if you right. take that ability to see and and trust me, there's no part of me that thinks it should be illegal or anything like that. I just th- right. I know that hey, sight fishing is a lot of fun. Everybody yeah. has had fun sight fishing, right? Yeah. But it's not the exact same feeling that when you're just burning a bait and you and you hook up and you yep. didn't even know the fish was going to eat yeah. it. Yeah, and you don't know the size, nothing. You know, a lot when I when I fish with them guys, he's like, "Oh, this is a big one." You know, <laughs> throw out to it, I'm, and I'm calling BS on it the whole way. You know, and he catches a six pounder, and I'm like, "Yeah, this is what I'm competing against." I, I actually, uh, you can ask my wife that <laughs> after I I had like great day fishing with those guys, and I, after it, I was I was uh, I was pretty down for a few days. <laughs> Because I was like, oh, my, you know, this is, uh, this is what I'm competing against. You know, I'm like, you know, so. Um. Do you, do you think it'll, t- I mean, my theory from the beginning is people don't give nature enough credit. Like I, I really, my whole life, and it's not forward facing sonar, but I've heard that, that zebra mussels were going to destroy smallmouth bass in the Great Lakes. They yeah. adapted and it made it better. I heard gobies were going to do the same. They adapted and it made it better. You know, like I think that that fish adapt. Um, right. Do you believe that that's going to like they're going to it'll the fish will kind of figure it out themselves because if you look at other electronics, right, you be able to catch every fish yeah. you dropped on on Lake Erie. Yeah. Remember that? <laughs> it was wonderful. I still, I still tried it. I was like, wow, this doesn't work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I think it will. I think I think it will get to where uh, I mean, and I hear that's what people are saying already. It's pushing a lot of them, you know, like you'll get up, you'll see them, they'll run instantly. You know, it's crazy. They can feel that. Um, so, yeah, maybe, you know, I mean, this is just the beginning of it. So, I mean, it's really, uh, you know, it's wide open. Everybody's catching giant fish. Everybody's catching like, you know, the biggest bass in their life using it. Um, yeah. But, you know, maybe maybe it will. Maybe something, you know. Maybe something will change with them. I mean, you, something will change for sure. I mean, hundred percent. Does it? You know, with everything, it's always changed. You know, but, but you're not changing. You're not embracing it. I'm right? not. Not. Not yet. Yeah. I mean, I, I got it. I mean, if I if I go like, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, you look at the end of last season. Like, man, I got whooped up on them last four, uh, three or four events, whatever it was. I mean, they. I mean, them guys just hammered them. You know, and uh, so yeah. I mean, if it starts getting like that, I'm gonna have to put it on. So you don't even have it on your boat now? No, I don't have anything. I don't have no graphs or anything yet. Nothing. Well, not like, yet. I, you, like, boat, or, I mean, so that's the thing. I'm like, I need to put these, I need to put these Lorenz 12s on there. And I'm like, ah, or I could go fishing today. And I'm like, ah, I'm gonna go fishing today. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for the love of God, John, in, embrace electronics a little bit. Like I, I know I'll, I'll go I to a lot of lakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll I will put those on and I might I'll put a I'll put a transducer on the trolling motor. But I, I think I don't I don't know. I think I think that's about it. I mean that's all I've been doing. So so mapping and you use mapping, right? Yeah. Like I mean to get around lakes and stuff. Yeah, I, I just use the mapping and like I used to run one in the back and then like I could kind of see, but a lot of places uh when I'm running, I almost don't want to know the depth because then I feel a little more like ah no, there's plenty of water here. Uh, you know, <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, it, uh, yeah. So now I'm not on that one in the back anymore. So <laughs> it's better <laughs> just to not know. Yeah, you don't want to know, like you know, because then you're like, oh gosh, I ran through there. So <laughs> me and Overstreet followed Tommy Biffle one day. We recovered him, and he had the exact same theory because he's like, you know how to get across here, <laughs> and Street's like, no, nah, I've never done. He goes. Turn off your graphs. If you can't see it, you can't hit it. <laughs> <laughs> and he white knuckled it right across. Oh my gosh. He made it though. He yeah. <laughs> it um no dude, it is one of the weird, craziest things in fishing right now. They the whole electronics war and and how and then I mean you are poster boy when people are like, well, no. John Cox does it. So how do you do it? Like, how do you think you're able to compete? Like on paper, you shouldn't be able to compete the way you, the way you can. I, well, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. The last couple of years have gone uh, really well. I mean, a lot of the tournaments, you know, uh, just getting around fish. I mean, there's been a few that's been like a complete disaster and, and you know, save the day by catching one or two nice ones. But uh, I mean, I, I mean, gosh, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't, um, 
Yeah, you know, I'm just trying to survive, honestly. I don't want I don't want to do anything else. I honestly don't think I could keep a regular job. Uh, you know. So, I got to do something in fishing and I'm really enjoying this the tournament stuff. So, I just got to, you know, I don't want it ever end. It almost ended uh 2013 or whatever. Ran, ran out of money. Wasn't going to I was fishing the FLW tour then. Uh was going into maybe it was 2012 going into 13. And then I, I wasn't on the roster, nothing. And one of my buddies called me. It was like, hey, man, you're not on the roster. I'm like, yeah, I don't have any money. And he's like, what do you mean? You, what are you going to do? And I'm like, I don't know. I can't go. And then he, he gave me like a sack, a sack of cash. It was like 18 grand. You know, what yeah. does your buddy do? Yeah, he's a doctor. Oh, and, okay. <laughs> yeah. So he, he, gave, he gave me doctor that Doctor of meth. <laughs> yeah. And I jumped in and I finished dead last in the tournament. And I'm oh. like, oh, my gosh. I'm like, what? I mean, I'm out, I'm out now, you know. And uh, he's like, I'll give you money to go to the next one. And so I go to the next one. I'm thinking, man, I'm never going to be able to pay him back. And I got I got second or something, you know, and paid him back his money. Had I think I had maybe five grand left or 10 grand left. And uh, and then it's just it's been rolling ever since then, you know, and I just don't ever want that feeling to happen. Like, you know, I don't ever want to feel like that. I mean, that was terrible. That's so wild because I remember, you know, like I remember when I first started hearing about this guy who doesn't, you know, he fish on aluminum boat, he doesn't use graphs and all, you know what I mean? Like you are yeah. a freaking fabled mystical character. You, you really are like, and, and dude, before you meet you, you know what I mean? All this, all you hear about is like, he doesn't even, you know, he just uses, if it, if he uses <laughs> rod to feel yeah. the bottom of the lake, it's, I mean, yeah. it's like you're freaking, uh, Mr. Miyagi, like that's how, <laughs> or at least that's how I created it in my head. <laughs> right, but right. so I'm here, but then there was a while where like, I remember people are like, is Cox fishing or, you know, so I didn't had no idea what was going on in your yeah. life, but um, wow, that's a, that's a tough, but you really, here's the weird thing that I don't think that, that I can't compute in my head, but it's so amazing about you. You simplify things to that level to the, like, I just want to make a paycheck type thing. Yeah. Like, because, yeah. and I hope you don't mind me telling this story, but I, because forever I've thought about it because I remember me and you were talking. I mean, it's no shocker that, that, I mean, there's been times where it's been hard for you to do all tours yeah. <laughs> and there's always like a, a bit of a measuring thing, whether I'm going to do this or that. Um. <clears throat> So we were talking and I remember you said to me, you were like, well, yeah, but that's six weeks in a row. That's six shots at 10 G's. That's 60 G's. And to me, I'm like, which trust me, six weeks for 60 G's is great. It, you know, I don't make that, <laughs> but um, I was just amazed. Cause to me, I would think John Cox thinks of, well, that's six shots at a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. But you you don't you very well. I mean, well, so, I mean when you when you've lost so many times, I mean you look how many times we've done that. I mean like it's it's hard like it's hard to win, you know. And uh, and but I do when I get you know when something happens when you're out there. The few the couple I've won, you know something happens either the first second day third day of the tournament where you're like oh, you know I got a shot here. It's I guess it's like how I I don't know anything about running, but I I would imagine. <laughs> You know, someone running a marathon, uh, they don't feel like they're going to win until they get close to the end. Maybe. I mean, that that's how if I was to run a marathon, I would think, hey, I'm I'm in the last, you know, few miles or whatever it is. Uh, you know, I have a shot here, you know, and that's kind of that's how I play it. Every one of them where, you know, I go the two days, I do the best I can. And if I if I, you know, hey, I got opportunity here, you know, to get this one done, um, you know, so I, I wait to feel that feeling till I'm. You know, because you can go blow it the first day. You can go think, hey, I'm going to win this thing. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to catch the, I'm going to, you know, and some guys do it. Sometimes you do do it. But I mean, you look at the, look at it on paper. Gosh, I mean, it, there's a, there's a good chance that's not going to happen, you know? So does the focusing on that paycheck, does it, is that part of what keeps you more mentally balanced? You know what I mean? I think, because it's an easier, it's a more attainable goal, it's a more realistic goal. Yeah. Well, and I think that's what keeps me uh, not super pissed off going to the next one or whatever. You know, that's what, you know, I, I, I so uh, Benji Seaboard used to travel with me all the time. And man, if I didn't get a check, he was he would just ride me the whole way home talking about, you know, hey, you know, you need to get paid for, you know, make sure, you, you know, 
you know, it's stupid. You know, you just left all that money on the table. So like, I guess that him beating that into my head all those years in like 2017 and 18 and 19, uh, it just kind of changed how I look at it a lot for sure. I mean, you're a lot more successful at tournament fishing, but it's just <laughs> explaining to me why, because dude, I, yeah. I mean, every tournament I ever entered, I was like, I'm going to win this one. Like, dude, yeah. I'm such a mentally positive person that yeah. it's negative in my life to the fact that like, I don't play the lottery anymore because <laughs> I used to buy the ticket and be like, what? It's half a billion dollars. They're giving away. I'd be spending the money all week, like from Monday <laughs> yeah. to the, the draws on Saturday. I'm five, six days into spending all that money. And then I'd check my ticket and I'd lose again. I'd be like, <laughs> It would be crushing because I'd really believe. Yeah, that I'm going to achieve this. Yeah, right, right. That's exactly the same thing. <laughs> it's it makes sense to me now. It makes sense yeah. to me now. But you it, could see how that how someone like me would find that shocking mm. when I'm talking to somebody who has won as many big level events as I know. You've lost a bunch. Everybody does, but you've won a bunch too. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it, I still don't. I, I like, you know, I have a, I have a trophy room now. I used to, I used to keep all my trophies like, uh, like in the closet and stuff. I had nowhere. Now I got like an actual room for them. And it, like, I walk in there and I'm like, man, this is like, this is insane that this has happened over, you know, the last 10, 12 years, whatever it's been. You know, it's just, uh, man, just, it's just nuts. It's nuts. Yeah. Cause I try to figure out, you know, all these times that I look back and I'm like thinking, man, where would I, where, what else would I be doing right now if I wasn't fishing? And like, I got nothing. Like, <laughs> what do you really think though? Like, what, where, where do you, what, where do you, what do you think? I was, I was thinking trash, man. I mean, I feel like they have like good benefits and like, you know, I think they're off on Sundays. I yeah. You get I mean, I, I, on Sundays. I swear I was, I was somewhere. I was, I mean, I, I don't know. It, but here's the thing that I love about you, dude. And it sticks I feel like a lot of dudes on the elite series feel the exact same way you do, except almost to a T. None of them have in some ways the balls to admit that because it, like, how have you been able to avoid the, you know, cause as you do things for a while, it's just, I don't know if it's the machismo of guys or whatever, but it's that whole well, this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm a tournament angler. You know, yeah. the mailman delivers the mail. He doesn't get nervous and I'm a tournament <laughs> angler. I don't get like, how have you been able to avoid that? And, and I mean, it's one of the most charming characteristics you have. I mean, the only two people in the elite series that are literally like that is you and Takumi again, where you're just like, huh, I won. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I, I don't know. I, I just, um, Gosh, I mean, I, I, I'm just like everybody else. Like, I, I'm the, I don't feel anything, you know, I don't know. I just, I mean, that's why I, I get along with everybody and stuff. And it's just, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not any different than that, you know, that, that kid fishing the Jumbo tournament or any of these college stuff or high school stuff, you know, I just, I, I look in the mirror now and I'm like, wow, I'm getting old. Like, gosh, you like, it's crazy how time flies, man. you know? But when you're not looking in the mirror, how mm -hmm. old do you think you are? Gosh, I honestly like I I feel I mean besides like aches and pains and like, yeah yeah like sore like I I mean I, I'm like mentally I'm I would give myself maybe 19 and a half maybe 20 you know right there I'm yeah. right there with you <laughs> older kids I'm like I feel like I'm like their age you know like you know <laughs> and I'm like. And then what you realize they don't see you like that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. What, what is this thing? Adult thing supposed to happen? <laughs> no, it's, it's weird. It's um, I feel the exact same way. Like, I mean, you put the right song on, I got the windows down and I think yeah. I am. And then I'm like, wow, why is there, why is my beard so white? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think that's healthy though. I think that it's healthy to like, I mean, I don't ever want to be that guy who's like, uh, I'm this age. You know what I mean? Like, it, I, I think it's healthy to. Yeah. <laughs> I really just think that, and I read this somewhere, and it's true. There was a time when I used to think that, like, I'd be older and I'd be an adult. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was when I was a kid. And yeah. then, then I became an adult and I had kids. And now I realize nobody's older. 
Nobody yeah. becomes an adult. You just act like an adult in front of your kids every once in a while. <laughs> like it's literally <laughs> the only time. Like, I mean, yeah. I'm an idiot that laughs at fart jokes, but if I go to a parent teacher interview, I'm going to, yeah. I mean, at least yeah. turn my hat around forwards or something. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> oh. no. Do you, uh, I mean, dude, I, I'm just amazed by by that level of humility, and 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 I, and I think it's the way everybody should be. But I, I just think that when you're around guy, like, so do you ever get involved in any kind of trash talking with other pros or anything? Like, are you ever like, I'm on them? Yeah, no, no, never. I mean, no, no, you never know. You know, you go out there. I mean, gosh, I don't know how many times I'm like, man, I got this one. I go out there, I don't catch anything. Finish dead last. Like it's so, it's so unpredictable, you know, and you need, uh, you know, you have to have every little bit of anything like in your favor, you know? And, uh, yeah, so I don't trash talk at all. <laughs> so what about like sponsors and stuff like that? How do you, how do you deal with it? Like, I mean, are, are you like, do you aggressively pursue sponsors or, <laughs> or do you? No, I, I, so like a lot of like a lot of like my sponsors is the I've been with them all like the same ones for so long. Yeah. I, mean, I think Mercury's been like twelve or thirteen years. Crestliner's been twelve or thirteen years. Um, you know Berkeley and stuff and Abu and that's been I think five or six years or something. So like um, yeah, I mean it's just you know and like I I like you know I work hard for the sponsors. I give them lots of feedback. I test a lot of baits. And, you know I'm uh, I'm constantly. Uh, you know, I, I feel like, I mean, I feel like I'm working constantly, uh, you know, you know, so, um, yeah. So, I mean, it, it's going good. I, mean, I really, I like, I really won't take any sponsorship thing unless I know, like I can use it. That's something that's not going to be hard. Like that I'm going to have to try to sell anything or, yeah. you know, whatever that's stuff I'm going to use and that, like I believe in and stuff. And so, yeah, so the, the sponsor thing has been great. <laughs> you know, it's been really good. What about social media? You like social media? Uh, so I, uh, I don't, I mean, I, I like social media, whatever, but I, I just, the only thing, the only problem I have with social media, uh, besides when everybody knows I'm out of town and they come to my house to fish my pond is, is Oh, I never yeah. thought about that. Yeah, that's terrible. Yeah. They like everyone, like it's like constantly. So but, really, uh, yeah. Yeah. So like, I, you know, that's dirty. Yeah. Don't do that people. Yeah, I know. But you know, the only thing is to like, uh, I just, I always worry, I guess my thing is social media, I always worry um you know about like maybe that person having a rough time right like in their life then or whatever it is and i feel like you know someone that's uh looking at uh, so much fakeness on there uh yeah. that you know i almost want to have one that's just full of bad stuff you know and be like oh you know i stepped in poop today or whatever it is you know like you know something that more you know i don't know but that, that's the only thing like i because like i know like i have i have a uh, such a good life right now and stuff and i just uh you know i don't know i just don't want to uh i feel for the people and yeah it's got a negative effect on a lot of people yeah i mean especially the younger kids the younger kid the younger group of kids these that are growing up now i mean they, they're seeing like they're, they're like glued to that stuff you know yeah and, uh, tiktok and like i was gonna start a tiktok and i was like ah this would be kind of fun and cool but then like see my kids and i like i have to like pry my phone i won't get them phones like they're all nan's like Nan's like 14 and Will's like Will's like almost 12. Or maybe she's 12. She might be 12. But like I can't even like I don't even want to get them phones because it's like, man, it's like, you know, when they have a conversation with someone, I want them to look the person in the eye and have a conversation, you know, instead of like, and that's what one one Nan was like, I'm at school, everybody thinks I'm weird because when I talk to them, I look them in the face. You You're know? making me uncomfortable. It's exactly yeah, I know, yeah. So that's what I just I don't know. There's just uh, you know, there's some great stuff about it. You can find some great stuff. I mean um but that that part of it that's the part that bugs me about it you know yeah yeah it's and i think people are like it's the worst name thing social like it's not social at all it's the exact it's like yeah. the anti-social like yeah. people are becoming yeah. i've told this story before but like this was a few years ago we were at an event and it's saturday and when you guys are on the water I mean, people like to come say hi to me because the real right. people stars are out gone. So yeah. they'll come say hello <laughs> to me. Uh, but anyways, so this one dude sees me across the expo and he literally points right at me. And like, you know, our eyes connected. You know what I yeah. mean? Like he's coming straight to me. 
and I'm talking to somebody and he walks straight up. And as he's walking up, he's like, can I take a selfie? Like, like it's all in one motion. There's he never stopped walking. I say, yes. He puts his arm around me, takes a picture. Thanks. Walks away. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm just like, wow, I just, I feel violated. <laughs> and, and then that night, that night I go on social media and he tags me on and says, exactly. He said, hanging with my bro, Dave Mercer at the elite series event. And I'm like, we, we didn't even talk. Like we, you, I feel like I was trophy hunted. It's, yeah. it's yeah. just bizarre. Uh, yeah. That is so funny. You brought that up. Cause that is, that is, that is, that is true. You know, and it's crazy. <laughs> and everybody, you like, I mean, and there's still a lot of people true, you know, but, but it used to be in the past where you'd meet people and they'd want to ask you a bunch of questions about different things. And that to me seems so much more normal. Now it's like, people just don't want to waste the time of spending any time with you. They just would rather just take a picture so they can show get right. the most amount of likes at the end of yeah. the day or whatever. You know, it's crazy too. Cause like, I've seen that in different towns we go to. And uh, I think I was in uh uh richmond virginia on the james river and i was shocked though i mean it, it was like you were having five to ten minute conversations with every person that was there yeah. you know and i feel like that was a lot uh, a lot more than you know a lot of places we go to it's like you said you know, take a picture you know but uh yeah. people really uh you know I like i know a lot of people there in richmond virginia now <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think it might have to do with the age of people. I mean, I bet you in Okeechobee, we'll have a lot of talkers. Well, oh, yeah. a lot of there's I mean, oh, a lot yeah. of golf carts get driven yeah. to those weigh-ins. Oh, that's that is that is going to be exciting down there. How 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 do you? Uh, I know you like St. John's. Probably that's your number one in Florida. I would imagine. Is that where's Okeechobee ranked for you? Uh, I. I mean, Okeechobee, I think I get in the north end about two and a half hours. And, uh, you know, I've fished there you know, my whole life uh, in that January, February time frame. And, uh, I mean, I, I love Okeechobee. It's been good. I've never really won anything big. I've got some seconds there and stuff. And, uh, you know, I'm like thinking one of these days. Maybe one. soon. Yeah, maybe. You never know. So. Gosh, I'd like you to kick off the season with ah, win. Oh, it feels so good. I said, especially because I felt like last year I, I felt like I oh. failed a little bit. Just a little bit, you know. I just felt like, you know, I blew a blue St. John's pretty bad, uh, and there was a couple other ones I messed up on, you know. And uh, so I was just like, man, it'd be so nice to start off with a, a couple good ones. Why yeah. do you? Why do you think you blew that one? Like, the, it, was there fish you lost, or was it? Is it just when uh, you're that close, you that, just need I, to close I, the door? Yeah, I just missed some fish, and uh, I just. Um, the days that didn't show uh, were like, I made really good decisions, but like I had a, like a nine pound day, you know, that's killed me. And yeah. then, uh, you know, last day I just got impatient with a really big one and uh, I couldn't get him to eat my braid. So I was like, ah, let me throw this, you know, 25 big game in there. What I normally catch them on, you know? Uh, and then I got that, it was like a nine pounder, get all the way to the boat. And like, I mean, I can tell it's like pinned right in the top. I'm like, I got her. I reached down to get her and it just comes off. And I was just like, oh, you know, and yeah, you know, so it was just, uh, you know, that one was kind of, I don't know. It was hard to get over that one because that was like uh, everything lined up. They pulled up day three, you know, I go into day four with 30 pounds on the bed. You know, it's like, when is this ever going to happen again? You know, yeah. it, but I was happy for John, too. I think he, I think John, he won that one. Then, uh, you know, the rest of them, I don't know if they went so well. So I was like, ah, you know, it's good. He won that one and, you know, got some money in the bank and stuff. Do you what? Do you have like a fish that stands out in your mind, like the greatest fish you've ever caught in your life? Like, doesn't have to be the biggest, but it's like they, they're a fish. And when you like, that stands yeah, out I, in your mind. Yeah. So I, uh, so the well, to the one, the one uh, this year on the St. John's I caught, I thought it was like a fifteen pounder. So I sat on it day three for like three hours, and I finally catch it, and and I'm like, I grab it, and I'm like the most disappointed person ever to catch a you know because i'm like it's only a 10 <laughs> and i was i was like i would have never stayed this long you know and uh that one really stands out but i there was this one uh when i was fishing docks with the general and uh 
and I, and I have my spinner on stuff and I, and I throw it up under this dock and it would eat it and I set the hook and it cut me off on one of the uh, cables there. So I came back a few hours later and I skipped it right back in the same spot and that sucker ate it. So I trolled up and I sent the rod uh, underwater, I opened the bale up, sent it under the, under the, uh, the chain there, grabbed the rod, flipped it over, tightened up and caught it. And that was like, probably, it was like, it looked like I knew what I was doing. Like it was like, <laughs> and I got the fish. It was only like a three pounder, but it had my hook and the line cut off in it. I was pretty proud of that one. <laughs> oh. What what is the uh, what's the worst fish you've ever lost? Oh gosh, there's a lot of those. There's there's so many of those that keep me up at night. Like uh, it's crazy as you I, I might remember losing uh some of those key fish more than uh yeah. than catching ones, you know. And, um I mean probably that that one from the St. John's, that one was uh that one was heartbreaking. Um you know, knowing that that I mean that you that's a hundred you went a hundred grand. That was that was the one I was supposed to lip. And get them in and be like, that's a hundred grand or whatever, you know, and like, you know, and it, and it, and it just come off, right? I mean, I almost, I almost touched it. And um, that, that's probably been my worst one uh, that I can think of. Did you ever, um, growing up, did you ever do that? Like all by yourself in a boat or maybe with a good buddy like Keith or something? Did you ever like shout out lines? <laughs> Godzilla ain't got nothing on me or anything. Like, did you ever imagine you were winning the tournament or, uh, or am I the only idiot that did stupid stuff? Oh, like no. That? Oh, we, we did stuff like that all the time. And, uh, you know, that, I mean, that's, uh, gosh, I mean, who knows? We would probably say a bunch of, a bunch of terrible stuff we can't say on here either. But it was, uh, I wish you, you know, would. Yeah. It was, uh, <laughs> it was, uh, gosh, man. That, I mean, that's what we would do. That's what we live for. Man, I mean, Keith, we fished together like, I started taking him uh, to teen anglers, the high school tournaments, uh, yeah. because I'm well, I went to private school. You had to um, have so many community service hours. So like I needed a hundred, you know, so I could take Keith to these tournaments and get 10 hours, you know? So I was like, I was taking him all these tournaments and I'm you like, You went wow. to private school? Yeah. Well, cause you know, after seven, it's all this story doesn't add up. You're like Slurpees and cigarettes to, but I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't pass anything. I had to go to private. I had to go, I couldn't, I couldn't pass my class. <laughs> so I had to go to private school and play baseball. And, did you wear a uniform? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, did yeah. you look like the little dude from ACDC? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Green and black polo. Yeah. Wow. And they, they used to do $5 fine us. So like if I had any stubble coming in and like I had a mustache in like fourth grade, Come yes. on. Yeah. So like any stubble coming in, I'd have to go down in the office and they would, they, I'd have to shave and then they would charge you a $5 fine. So like when I graduated, uh, <laughs> they wouldn't give me my diploma until I paid all the fines. And it was like three, $400. Come on. Yeah. I don't all think for, I, all for I don't stubble. Think I well, I'll uh, show you. I'm going to become yeah. a professional angler and never shave again. Yeah, never again. <laughs> so uh, get back to Keith. Sorry, uh, we got we got sorry. a little distracted. That, that's what, Keith Carson. For those who don't know, Bassmaster Classic qualifier, stand out in every freaking tournament he fishes. It seems. Yeah. Yeah. It's me and me and him. We started after that. Uh, me taking on those tournaments. Uh, I was like, man, I'm like, he's pretty good. I was like, you know, I said, hey, we should start fishing team tournaments. And man, we we started fishing. We we would win. Uh, we fished the uh, Central Florida Bass Anglers or whatever, and we won the points the first year we fished together. And uh, and it was like, man, I was like, uh, we were really a good team together. And like, so that was uh, that was 19 years ago. Wow. And that great. And then we fished all the way together. I mean, we still fun fish now, but. I think they kind of told us to stop coming back to a lot of the team tournaments, probably like uh, maybe in like 17 or so. So, but we had, we had an awesome run together getting the fish tournaments and uh, it was crazy how like, even when I, so like, I would watch him on live and I would see him make a bait change or a move or whatever. And I'd be like, uh, you know, it's like what I was thinking, you know? Wow. So it's really cool to see that because we fished together for so long that our decision-making is a, uh, it's pretty close, you know, it's pretty, it's like right there. So yeah, we, it, have, we have. it's pretty wild. Um, we go to a lot of cool events and obviously the classic is one of those events that's 
huge. I mean, it's all, you know, I leave every year and I'm, it's like I constantly under over, you know, underestimate it. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I've been to a lot of these now. Yeah. I can, and I'm not even competing in it. I'm just yelling in a microphone. Um, yeah. But when you leave an event like that, you always have like these snapshots, or at least I do. That's how I remember events. Like it's a, it's a snapshot of just moments in my head. You know what I mean? That stand out. And yeah, you can remember all of the stuff, but in your memory, it's really their standout moments. And one of the cool moments, and a lot of times it's not a moment that I'm involved in. It's not a moment. It's just something you see. And one of the coolest things I saw, and I didn't have my phone on me because I just got off the stage and it, the phone was in the back, um, or I would have took a picture of it. And we ended up talking afterwards, but I watched you and Keith walk out of the classic. Like, I think it was on the final day after it had been one, but you were just walking side by side and like, kicking through confetti basically over the, you know, through the, but I'm like watching you and you're both laughing and kind of, you're like, man, those are two lifelong friends that just got to fish the freaking Bassmaster yeah. classic together. And it was yeah. almost like a childlike joy. Did I read that totally right or, or totally wrong? Oh no, we, we were, I think the night before it started, uh, we were just like, man, yeah, it, it was like so unreal, you know? And yeah. And, uh, and like, I wanted him to win it, you know, just as bad as I wanted to win it, you know, and I, you know, we were like, you know, going over our game plan and stuff. And, uh, man, it was, it, it was, it, it was, I think right that moment you're talking about when you saw us walking like that, you know, it was, uh, when we got into the arena, it was, it was so unreal. It was just like, wow, this is what we, you know, we pretended to be in every turn. We fished every tournament, like we were in the Bassmaster Classic, you know, like, I mean, fishing to the last second and, you know, and, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was, uh, that was, I mean, honestly, I, neither of us, I don't think we either did any good, uh, but it was like one of those greatest moments, you know, it was like, yeah. man, we both, you know, lived, you know, grew up, uh, you know, two streets over from each other, you know, and now we're both here at the Bassmaster Classic. It was, it was pretty unreal. Do you think he'll ever be on the elites? Uh, I think, I think he will. He's really good. Like he's, uh, you know, he, he took a little break there for a little bit. He got burned out, I think. And, uh, but man, he came back like super strong. Like he was doing really good. And, um, I, I think, I think we will see him, uh, sooner than later, you know, uh, I'm pretty sure. Cause he, he's kind of like me and wants to fish as many as he can. And, um, I think he'll, he'll make the decision, you know, and jump in those opens sooner and later. So to have him on the road with you, would that be good news for your career or bad news? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We, so we, uh, we kind of, uh, kind of split up and like I fished the elites and then he was fishing MPFL and then we were both fishing, uh, MLF pro circuit and, uh, man, it was great. Like rooming together and practicing. Uh, but then it's like, gosh, like we, we fish so similar, you know, and, and we've grown up fishing a lot of these places together uh, that it's kind of like we'd have to take turns. It would be like, OK, you know, you go this time and he'd make a top 10. And I'd be like, all right, dude, I finished dead last in the last one. I'm going to the good stuff this time. And he's like, OK. And then he would finish bad. So it was like we swapped off e each of them. And it's like, I mean, it's crazy. You know, you think we both like would make a cut together or something. And it never happened. It was like one of us would make a top 10 and the other one wouldn't even get a check. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'd love to see him on the Elite Series. And, yeah, and I'd, 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 I think we'd I'd figure it out eventually, right? I mean, you would think yeah. you would, there's some kind of something we don't have figured out yet. I just like to hang out with you two when you start telling stories about each other and stuff like oh, that. Yeah. I mean, I think it would be fun. Oh, yeah. So what are you fishing this year? Have you have you finalized what you're fishing? I know you've uh, been I mean, all I, over I, the place. I, I, paid up for everything uh i'm still i'm still on the fence i'm definitely doing bassmaster elites paid up for them i'm fishing uh the thank MLF. you would have made this interview real uncomfortable if you broke yeah. bad news <laughs> yeah actually no. No, I saw it. and uh i'm gonna do uh the invitationals i think i'm gonna miss one one or two of those and then i'm on the fence about signing up and fishing the mpfl with keith uh, and I'd miss like one of those. And uh, it's not it's not that much more. It's like uh, I think there's two of those in the beginning part of the season. Uh, and then the rest of them are once we're done. Um, so I don't know. I'm kind of leaning towards maybe trying to do those, too. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, like, 
some Tuesday nighters. Do, do you fish yeah. any other tournaments outside yeah. of like national tours? Do you? No, I and mean, I, I haven't. I mean, I haven't really lately because uh, I haven't been fishing so much. You know, I, I just kind of you know go fishing with the. I, I actually, when I'm home and I'm not like practicing for a tournament or anything, I uh, you know go shiner fishing. You know, and a lot of people. Some people hate on that shiner fishing, but man, that shiner fishing, it's a, uh, it's catching. You know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, me and you have been trying to hook up a yeah, summer trip at yeah, some we're, point. Once we're once we're you gotta fly out the day. Oh, we gotta go to Seminole from uh Yeah, it's not gonna work out this year. That's terrible. No, it's oh, not good. That Wednesday. You coming in Wednesday? Which the off, Wednesday? The Wednesday. Which is the off day. Wednesday. Oh, before, before the first event? Yeah. Could we go shiner fishing? We, it's an off day. We'll go somewhere. We'll go in the, yeah. Uh, let me look <laughs> into my travel. I'd yeah. be all That's, into doing that. Yeah. I think you get in Wednesday. Yeah, you got to be in Wednesday for the meeting. Oh, uh, no, we won't be able to make the meeting. Ah, <laughs> I got to go I'll, shoot something for yeah. bass. I mean, yeah. it's the yeah, that'll go production well. of some sort. Um, yeah. <laughs> probably shouldn't have talked about this on the podcast maybe yeah. i'll have to edit this part of the conversation yeah. out yeah that part out <laughs> so, so do you do you have goals in fishing or is it literally just to keep making a living yeah um i mean of course i want to win and, and like i'd love to win a classic and all that but like i mean the main goal is to uh i mean like i just want to you know I want my kids to be able to eat and, you know, have a nice place to live. And, you know, I don't know, but I want to, I want to win. I want to, I want to get like, uh, you know, you always see these guys like get on a roll and they're like, oh, they want to, you know, and you like, they like win a couple in a row or something yeah. like, like I've had some good like runs on some of the lakes and stuff, but I'm like waiting. Like, I feel like there's going to be like this time where like everything just kind of lines up a little more, you know, and uh, you know, I don't know. But, yeah, I'm. I I don't doubt that it'll happen. I mean, they might have to outlaw <laughs> forward facing sonar for it to happen. Oh, <laughs> you oh, imagine how they'd all I, suck. <laughs> I was thinking. I was like, gosh, you know, I might, I might put it on and be like, oh my gosh. You never know. I mean, uh, you you may fall in love with it, but I don't think so. I don't think yeah. so. I think you, uh, dude. I think, I think you've got you you've got too much. Like in my opinion. You have too many sensory glands going in right. too many directions right. to focus on one thing. There's no, there's no way I could. Well, I how many? Sorry. I think the same thing. I don't think. I don't think. I don't think I could focus on that screen the whole time. You know. Yeah, I mean, it'd be a disadvantage to you. Like, right. I think that that's that's why you're so good. Like, how many different when you're out there fishing? Yeah. Throw in a general. Is the general the bait yeah. you've caught? Speaking of which, is the general the bait that you've caught? Like more, you made a lot of money on that bait. It seems. Yeah, yeah. It was when when Berkeley, uh, when uh, when I was trying to work something out uh, to come to Berkeley because I never did anything with any bait sponsors because I was like I want to throw you know what's going to work and I want to. And then when they sent me the general, uh, you know, the first time they sent him before they were before it even really came out then and uh, and I was like oh yeah I'm in. Yeah, like I was like, you know, a couple of days of throwing them, I was like, oh no, I'm in. So. You had me at general. Yeah. <laughs> so, so when you're rolling down the bank, throwing your general. Yeah. What? Wh where? What signs do the fish like? Where? What are you reading? It's not just what's oh, it, in front. Of, like. It, yeah, I mean that. So that's the thing where like I can't focus on one thing. I'm like, I'm like 360 degrees around the boat. Like I'm. I'm hearing like a bluegill pop over here or a splash over here, or like I catch a wake out of the corner of my eye. Like I'm really, uh, like I, today I was working at the, uh, my other house. I was trying to, uh, build a seawall, you know, right out from the lake. And like, I'm hearing them pop over here and I'm, I'm seeing them start to spawn over here, chase each other. And like, I'm just like, I'm going to catch them out of the corner of my eye, but it's like getting my attention like that, you know, and this wall, I've been working on it for like a month now and I just can't, I can't do it right near the water. You know, feeder <laughs> is just a disaster. <laughs> but that's all. That's what makes you who you, who you are, right? Which you, I mean, that's yeah. without all of that, you know, because the majority of people can't pick up on all that, right? You, I guess you, I don't. I just 
I don't know. I, I mean, that's I, that's part of it. What I love about it, I love, you know, I love just being in in the, uh, I guess, just in the like on the water, you know, just all the all the stuff in it. What's your favorite moment in fishing? Like, do you have a moment where you're just like, "There's that's it, that's my happy place." Oh yeah, that, uh, uh, there's probably a couple. Like one, if I'm like looking and I'm just like trolling and I'm like, and all of a sudden, like you know, I see one or I, and I just lob it out in front of it and catch it those are my that's what i'm like oh yeah i love that i mean i can you know that's what that's what gets me out of bed in the morning yeah it's wild you know like and I, i've tried to think it's so it must be ingrained in you from forefathers or something you know what i mean because right. it's like i mean i used to have a puppy that i would throw a sock on a rod and reel to no hooks of course but yeah. i'd throw <laughs> And I'd fight that it felt just like when you'd close, like when you weren't looking, that little thunk felt just like a bass. Everything. You know what I mean? Wow. The fight at yeah. times was better than a bass. Yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't freaking a bass. You yeah. know what I mean? Like there's yeah. just something from that moment that the fish can it's it's just a it's a wild thing. It really is. And you like you see it like uh so like Lil's in the uh high school tournaments or whatever. And, uh, like I see it in some of those kids and I'm like, I mean, they, ca they catch one fish and they're like, you know, that, I mean, that's, a, it's like, it's amazing. Like you see it in, in others, you know, they're like, ah, you know, whatever, you know, but it's just crazy how some of us just have that, you know, the love for it. Yeah. And it, you can't, I mean, no matter how hard you try, I think it's the same in, in a lot of things, you know what I mean? Like there's athletes that you know that they, there's things they do that nobody could have taught them you know what i mean they just have that instinct and that they're meant to do what they're doing do you believe that you are meant to be doing what you're doing <laughs> oh gosh i don't i i just you know just like thinking about it, like what else i'm not, I'm not really good at anything else <laughs> 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 i guess i don't know I just try to like, you know, I, I'm the guy like even when I worked with Keith, like I was the guy that held the ladder, you know, held the ladder, you know, filled them back up with paint, you know, wiping the windows down or whatever, you know. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I just I just don't know what else I would do with my life. Like, I don't like I can't imagine like, if, you know. It's just all the events that led up to this. It's just amazing how they all, you know, kind of fell into place over time. Yeah. I mean, the more and more, I believe that you, everything that happens to you is exactly what it's meant to be. You know what I mean? And some yeah. of it, which is the shittiest thing to hear, like when you're going through bad stuff, if somebody's yeah. like, you're meant to go through this, it'll yeah. all. But at that time, you're just like, shut up. Yeah. yeah I don't but really want to. Yeah. In retrospect, it, it all seems to work out. And dude, I think you're doing exactly what you should be doing. I mean, you, you honestly... <laughs> You, you, I, I don't think you realize how many pros you inspire. Like how many pros when I'm like, like when I start talking to different pros about like who you'd like to spend a day in the boat with, and they're all you. Like a lot of them are. I mean, Rick Clun. All of them are Rick Clun. But, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but when I say, okay, remove Rick. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, it's because I think what you're doing is incredible, and and it's not just the forward facing thing. It's like you're. You are one of the most, you're a natural angler in a time when everything in angling is telling you to be unnatural. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're the last freaking nudist, bro. I, I know. <laughs> they all put clothes oh. on and you're still naked. I know. <laughs> Told you we should have done this in the hot tub. <laughs> I, I would have died in the hot tub by now. I, I think you're only supposed to spend like 10 minutes in it. Oh, that's what that's what would have been best because you would have got yeah. all weakened. Oh, yeah. I would have, <laughs> I mean, who knows what would have came out of my mouth in there? Oh, <laughs> uh, what's yeah. the worst things that what, what's the worst part about fishing for a living? Uh, it, it's got to be uh, all the stuff you miss. Like, yeah. I mean, I. I miss, gosh, I miss softball, soccer games, graduations, birthdays, um, you know, some of the really important, that's, that's what usually gets me, like, when we're somewhere, and it's like, uh, you know, like, Lil's, Lil's birthday for years, uh, we never even had it at home, because we were on the road, you know, Man. and it was, now that she, you know, now Melissa stays with them back here, so, you know, it's kind of, that part sucks, that part's terrible. Yeah, you know? I hear you there. But, 
but they yeah, almost that, never bring it up unless they're in a fight with you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you missed this, this, and this. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I miss, dude? I miss hanging out with you. Um, and I'm looking forward to a great, great year on tour with you. But uh, I, I can't thank you enough for doing this, dude. I oh, mean, I, it's it's not cocks in a tub. <laughs> but but I think I, it was a pretty cool conversation the same. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 uh, you know, I feel like I haven't seen you in a while. And so yeah. it was really, you know, it was good just to get, I feel like we, we're kind of caught up a little bit. I'm yeah. excited to with Joey now. And uh, I can't wait for, I want, I want to make the top 10 so bad. Uh, just so, you, you know, that it, it's a, when you go through everybody, I mean, I've told you this, but when you go through and you're calling everybody out and you're like saying their stats and stuff, you know, it's like, it's, it just takes you to this other, this other level of like, wow, we, like, I'm here, you know? And, and uh, that's one of the things that, I, you know, that, that pushes me to make that top 10 for sure. Well, I'm glad I can motivate you and you can embarrass. It's so weird, dude. I'll, I'll shoot water in the air and do us. Oh, yeah. Like if somebody compliments me, I'm like, shut up, <laughs> yeah. stop it. But that's, that's what you were meant to do though. That's the thing. It's like, it's like, gosh, and you get, I mean, just to know everybody's stuff. And uh, yeah, it, it's uh that's one of my favorite parts is making the top 10. Well, it, dude, I think it's the same with, with, I don't know. I'm, I don't know what else I would have done. You know what I mean? Like, I, and yeah. thank God. I mean, and, and I love it. I love, like, yeah. I don't think, I mean, I once had an opportunity to work at a golf event um, and I, I've often thought about that. And cause I was kind of excited, like to do a golf of just do different yeah. things. Right. I yeah. also had a female MMA. I was invited to do some announcing wow. of that. Yeah. Which wow. it never really came together. I totally would have done it just, you know, <laughs> um, but it, it, I think I'd, I'd like that to do different experiences, but dude, I love fishing. Like it's not, nothing's going to be, like, it's all going to be me fighting my dog on a sock. It's not going to yeah. be bass fishing. You know what I mean? Right. It's not going to have that same. Right. And that's, um, it shows when you're calling us out there, like, you're like, you know, so it's. It's ridiculous. Really. Nice. It's so ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> every once in a while, I'll be flipping through TV. Um, yeah. And I'll see, like, darts is a good one because I, yeah. I think I could have got a gig there. <laughs> um but i'll see it ridiculous our stuff i deem ridiculous like look at this tractor racing this is right. oh, are you kidding me professional cornhole is this a thing <laughs> and then then i'll like remember wait a second you're the mc of the <laughs> bass master class like the dude who mcs the cornhole stuff probably flips across fs1 and sees the bass yeah. masters like professional bass fishing like, <laughs> yeah to us, it's the best thing in the world. And dude, you're one of the best to ever do it. And um, I, I mean, honestly, you're an inspiration. And I thank you for uh, for being the person you are. And I really thank you for being a friend. <laughs> thanks, Dave. Well, thanks for having me on uh, what I'll see you in two weeks. Yeah. 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 Go get, are you getting in the tub now? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, hopefully she didn't already get in, which may hopefully she waited for me. Maybe. All right. Yeah. We'll All see. Right. All right. <laughs> Sorry, it couldn't be Cox in the tub, but it was pretty yeah. freaking good. Ladies and gentlemen, Elite Series champion. I'm calling it right now. I'm predicting it this year. Elite Series champion, John Cox. <laughs> I like the way that sounds. <laughs> yeah. Problem is, I say stuff like that at the end of almost every interview, and there's just there's not enough events. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're the best, dude. <laughs> There you have it, the one and only John Cox. And that was a very fun conversation. And I know what some of you were thinking. He promised to show us the tackle room. Well, as soon as we finished recording, we talked for like another half hour about all sorts of other crap. And then we both realized we never showed the tackle room. So later on this week, I'm going to post a bonus Mercer. I always, I still find that weird, just so you know. Um, I kind of wish we called this podcast something else. I don't know. The J -J -J Giant podcast. Something. Whatever. Other than Mercer. Because I, I'd have no problem promoting the J -J -J Giant podcast. Um, but 
I find it weird to be like, later on this week, you'll be able to see a bonus Mercer podcast. Um, but you will. And it'll be uh, a tour of his tackle room, which um, it's busy. There's a lot of discussions. A lot, uh, stories are revealed. Um, the dark side of Cox comes out. Let's just say that. Um, he seems like it's all joy and rainbows, bunnies, and bubble gum. There's a darkness within John Cox, and it will be revealed in the bonus episode of Mercer later on this week. If I was more organized, I'd be able to tell you what day, um, but I'm not. So um, I'll promote it on social media and stuff like that. And um, I, actually, here's what I'll do. By the time this is, goes live, I'll have figured out what day we're going to air that, and then I'll put it in the comments down below in the description. So I got you covered. So bonus Mercer. And uh, I mean, what does the world need? More cocks, right? And you're going to get it. That sounded so wrong. Bob Cobb, save me. Take it away, please. Sorry. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment. And subscribe because Bob Cobb of the Bassmasters told you to. You hear?